So the, the question is, we've got these, met, uh, these different frameworks um, in place and we've got excellent tools in place, but do they actually work in the real world? Are we answering or addressing real world questions? And that's where I want to get to the, the second part of the presentation. And this is um, where uh, we've assessed the Pongola floodplain in recent years. The Pongola floodplain is the largest floodplain in um, South Africa. It's also the biodiversity hotspot in South Africa where um, it has a very high um, number of bird species. Um, it, has, it supports a, uh, the greatest um, amphibian diversity in South Africa and it also supports the greatest fish diversity in South Africa. And the Pongola floodplain system in the early 1970s, before the construction of the Pongola Poor Dam, was um, seen as one of the um, earliest case studies of setting environmental flows in South Africa. And under Charles Breen at that stage, um, they looked at the Pongola floodplain and came up with a number of, of flows that would be required to inundate the associated pans um, once the dam has been built um, and therefore use operating rules of the dam to ensure that the pans are always flooded. In more recent years, a number of studies have been undertaken um, to, to uh, not on the best guesstimate, but on a more scientific basis to uh, identify different flows that will be required for the Pongola floodplain pans to be inundated with water. Um, in the study what, that we undertook um, which was a Water Research Commission funded study, um, we used all of the previous slides tools to assess the current status of, of the Pongola floodplain um, in relation to the current releases of uh, flood releases that are um, brought about through uh, operating the dam <coughs> and we made use of the prop flow methodology which was developed um, by Chris Dickens um, within a relative risk assessment methodology where we use Bayesian um, networks and because the Pongola floodplain system is actually a very a strongly linked socio-ecological system um, people are reliant on the water that inundate the pans not only for irrigation of crops but it's also for drinking water purposes it is for um, harvesting of protein of fish so there's a very strong link between the way the floodplain operates and, and um, the, the social interaction of the community with this ecological system. The past 15 years, however, that region of KwaZulu-Natal has been experiencing a prolonged drought. And for 12 of the 15 years, they've, they've received less than average rainfall. Um, at this stage, the Pongolapur Dam is around about 35 to 40 percent of its capacity, which means that the, 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 the pumps on the Swaziland side are all high and dry, so Swaziland's not able to extract any water from the dam. For the past two years, the um, Department of Water and Sanitation have not been able to allow for any flood releases, meaning that the floodplain um, did not receive the amount of water that's required for the inundation of the pans. Um, in the, the study that I showed you, where we used a Bayesian relief um, network model, the endpoints that were used were these socio-ecological endpoints. So it's just these little nodes on the side. And those little nodes on the side, the input data for those nodes are the, it would be the ecological information, the water quality information, the water volume information.